My patron Timothy asks why it is that Germans still take aspirin. Is it the 1950s over here? Well, the straightforward answer to that is that aspirin is a perfectly good general purpose painkiller. As long as it works, what's the problem? Well, of course, aspirin has side effects. It can cause nausea and even vomiting, and it's not something that you should be taking if you suffer from asthma. But there is one side effect that aspirin does not have. Unlike opioids, like for example morphine, it's not addictive. This is really why aspirin was needed in the first place, an effective painkiller that wouldn't get you hooked on it. The German drugs manufacturer Bayer was particularly interested in finding a solution to this problem and in 1895 introduced to the market diacetyl morphine, which was, it said, a non-addictive version of morphine. Except that it wasn't non-addictive. It's better known under its brand name, heroin. Many experts now believe that the current heroin epidemic in the US is at least partly due to American doctors over-prescribing opioids. However, Bio was also working on another lead. The bark of certain plants, in particular the willow tree, had long been known for its medicinal properties. There are references to it in texts dating all the way back to the second millennium BC. Scientists had already isolated the active ingredient, salicylic acid. It worked and it definitely wasn't addictive. Unfortunately, it could cause some nasty problems. It was particularly irritating to the stomach and gut. Bio was working on the problem and in 1897, one of its chemists, a man called Felix Hoffmann, came up with a possible answer. His father was being given salicylic acid to treat his rheumatism, but he was suffering terribly from the side effects. Hoffmann discovered that by adding an extra bit to the chemical to make acetyl salicylic acid, he could improve the efficacy of the drug and reduce the side effects. But the company wasn't convinced. Bayer was much more interested in Hoffmann's other great success, which was, ironically, heroin. At least that's one story. Another story is that Hoffmann was simply doing work for his supervisor Artur Eichengrün and it was Eichengrün who really made the discovery. On the other hand, it's Hoffmann's name who appears on the patent, so uh, let's just say that historians argue about this. It took a while, but eventually the company was persuaded to trial and market this drug under the brand name Aspirin. And it caught on. And unlike heroin, it genuinely wasn't addictive. The First World War caused a lot of problems for Bayer, and after it, they lost trademark protection on the name aspirin in some countries. This wasn't a direct result of World War I reparations, but a complicated business involving all sorts of shenanigans. In any case, the name aspirin is now generic in many countries. Not so in Germany, where Bayer still holds the trademark, which means that in Germany, only Bayer is allowed to sell something called aspirin. In. Everybody else has to use a different name, usually, and to the great delight of English-speaking tourists, incorporating the abbreviation of the German for acetyl salicylic acid. Right after the war, there was a flu pandemic, and this is where aspirin was really put to the test. And it worked, saving countless lives and establishing itself as the most effective treatment for fever at the time. And it's still pretty good. Although there are other more modern painkillers on the market, like paracetamol and ibuprofen, aspirin remains a pretty good choice for many people. The others have their strengths, but also their weaknesses. But European doctors are certainly much less likely than American doctors are to prescribe opioids. They may be more effective, but they carry with them a big risk of addiction. If there's no good reason that you really need one, you won't get a prescription. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to send me a postcard, here's the address. And don't forget to visit my website and follow me on Twitter and Facebook. Also, if you'd like access to special bonus content and help with the costs of running this channel, please consider making a small monthly donation on Patreon.